Now, Madam Abba, unfortunately, is not here, and uh, Arun is here, and all of you said, our key thrust is polio eradication. Polio has disappeared. Fine. But did you know these diseases have a different thing altogether? Disease is not due to disease doesn't go because of our treatment of our vaccination disease goes when the immune system of the human beings improves remember that these are called dynamic diseases they have a cycle if a layman wants to know what a dynamic disease is i don't recommend you go into the medical literature because there's a jungle full of dead wood there's no occasional teak or rosewood but to get there you will be eaten by the tiger or bitten by a snake so i suggest a good book for you a layman's book which is called turning point book is called turning point written by a physicist who himself became altruistic his name is fridge of capra fridge of capra is teaching physics in the new york university now what happens you know this whole thing inside you think oh science is very great let me tell you a small quick story 1907 j j thompson gets the nobel prize who was the director of the cavendish institute of physics in cambridge nobel prize for saying that electrons are particles fine nobel prize 1937 his own son p j thompson gets the nobel prize 30 years later for saying that they are waves nobel prize 1932 erwin schrodinger says they are wavicles they are neither waves nor particles nobel prize and 1925 who got the nobel prize in 1956 Werner Heisenberg said you just don't know what an electron is because you just can't see it how do i see arun when i look at arun a few photons from his body eject out and hit my retina and then i know arun is there now if one photon leaves an electron the electron becomes non electron this is described in the scriptures thousands of years ago what do they say asino vrajati duram shayano jati sarvatha you know you have an electron which you can't see and so beautifully said in the gita which is from the upanishad which says bahir antascha bhutanam it is inside and outside of everything charam acharame vacha it keeps moving you're all you know moving leptoquarks but you look solid it's maya charam acharame vacha it moves but looks non move sukshma avatet avijnayam so this is the beauty of it it is so subtle that no vijnana can ever look at the electron that's the beauty durastam for those who don't know they don't know cha aniketa cha it's very close if you know tat that tat was mistaken for god and we lost science there's so much of science in the vedic wisdom that the westerners now are trying to investigate you go to any indian university they read einstein's book einstein was a clerk in the patent office in bern but you go to germany do you know what they read they read the indian scriptures the present president of the max planck institute in munich with the best physics institute in the world hans peter dior a good friend of mine has got all our scriptures and he quotes these things now he has realized e is equal to m you and i are taught e is equal to mc squared isn't it no e is equal to m and he calls it as a duality and he was telling me what is my nomenclature of a duality look at those indian seers they called it thousands of years ago as advaita no duality at all fascinating isn't it now i'll come to reality my dear friends disease is directly proportional to the virulence of the organism but inversely proportional to the resistance of the host 1915 theobald smith was an american physician who had the audacity to say this because up until then everybody believed in robert koch germ disease germ disease kill the germ this is gone no disease is not gone nowhere i won't tell you more about polio because it might hurt because you don't want to know the truth truth is bitter truth is very bitter and truth can influence only half a score of men in a century said aristotle where falsehood and mystery will drag millions by the nose i will tell you something there is an indian scientist called pushpa bhargava pushpa bhargava is a respected indian scientist who was the vice president of the indian knowledge commission right now he resigned from the commission because i'll tell you why anyway he wrote a beautiful paper for you people to read which is called the politics of poliomyelitis what's the paper politics of poliomyelitis it's available on hindu and if you want to know it's the march 11th hindu 
I mean, 2000 something. I don't exactly remember the year. But if you go to Hindu's archives and push there, Pushpa Bhargava, friends, knowledge advances not by repeating known facts, but by refuting false dogmas, of which there are many in the world. Number one, even a textbook of medicine as recently as 2006, the British National Formulary has this sentence in it. Number one, do not give live oral polio vaccine to malnourished children. Number two, if you want to give it, first improve their nourishment and when they have enough nourishment, then only give it. Number three, space it by more than one month because repeated doses quickly will damage the system. And number five, it's only in India that the 31st dose is being given the other day. I mean, the argument is all children don't come every time, so we'll give it. Those who have come, they have taken 31 doses. Now what happens in a poor child if you give polio vaccine? It's a live virus. So if the virus goes in and your whole immune system's head off is, is in the gut, from your mouth to the anus. And we need germs there. Do you know how many germs you've got between your mouth and anus? You'll be shocked. 10 to the power 13, 100,000 billion germs you've got there. If they're not there, you're not alive. We have a symbiosis with them. And this virus goes there in a child which has no immune system at all, the virus mutates. It becomes a powerful P3 virus, P1 virus, the deadliest virus, and comes out in the shit. And mind you, we don't have toilets in our villages. And the shit gets dissipated in rainy season all over the place. Other children touch it and eat it, and they are now given a deadly P3 virus. And according to Pushpa Vargava, thousands of Indian children got polio recently, not because of the God-given polio, but man-made polio. Do you know what India needs, my dear friends? Man is man's biggest enemy. What is the greatest service you can do? Let me tell you from my heart. Give a good example to society. Give a good example to society. I can preach to all of you and think that I have preached to the Rotarians and they will all become good human beings tomorrow. I have no guarantee. But I can take an oath standing on this pedestal. I will be a better BMA day tomorrow than what I am today. I am sure of one thing, there is one rascal less in this world. I want each Rotarian to take an oath today. I want every Rotarian, Rotarian, Rotary kid, uh, Rotary, everybody to take an oath, go home, stand before the mirror, cross your heart and say, I shall be a better human being tomorrow. I shall be homo altruisticus and not homo economicus. Because it's so easy to live by sharing. And let me tell you as a doctor, it improves your health. The immune system depends on three things. A, your mind, your consciousness. All negative thoughts destroy you and not the person they're aimed at. Ayurveda so beautifully said, Krodha, Shokha, Bhaya, Ayasa, Viruddhanna Bojana, Taponalan, Katwa, Amlakshara, Lavanati, Kshnoshnati, Rakta, Pitta, Prakopet. All diseases come from the mind. And what is the solution? I'll give the rotary solution. Hita, Mita, Ahara, Sevi. Eat in moderation. Be a gunda. Best thing is, eat it and walk away and forgive him. Forgiving is not cowardice. Forgiving requires a lot of strength of mind. Then what does it say? Data. Samaha, Satyapara. Data, be a giver, not a taker. Samaha, treat everyone as equal. Don't look somebody down, look somebody up. And a man's character can be found out how he behaves with others. You just have to observe a man talking to his boss and talking to his peon. Then I know what the man is. If he talks in two different ways, he is a man to be shunned. I always tell young girls looking for a husband, just to go and watch him at his work. And see how he behaves with his boss and his assistant. If the behavior is different, leave him. End your dating that day itself because he is going to be a very bad person. <laughs>